back then, you know, I was a huge, even to this day, I'm not going to say back then, I was a huge Rick James fan. When I was in the Navy, I, used to, I had all of his joints. I used to be in the mirror singing his records. I used to be able to do a pretty good Rick James. So I used to sing Mary Jane. I mean, he's the only person that I actually paid to go to his concert. You know what I'm saying? Because back then, we used to bum rush concerts. You, I don't know if they still do that. But we used to come with like 50 guys and bum rush. Just, just, just rush the door. Maybe they would catch two or three, but the other 30 or, or the other 30 something guys would get in. And I was always one. We would get in. You know what I mean? I mean, the Nassau Coliseum, I remember one time, you know, the Nassau Coliseum has these giant uh, plate glass windows going all the way around it. I remember this big buff guy named Sabu picked up a garbage can, just broke one of them shits, and n niggas ran through the glass before it could even break all the way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Got shredded, you know, <laughs> to get in and <laughs> see Earth, Wind, and Fire, man. It was off the hook back then. I'll never forget the first night I met him, you know, I, that's the first person that I would say out of all the celebrities that I met that I was, I was starstruck. And I, I, I remember we got in a limo and uh, he started kicking it and he was mad niggerish, man, which was, you know, right up my alley. He was buck wild, you know what I'm saying? He, he was a regular dude and uh, he had mad pimping styles, mad, mad pimping skills, man. We went to, to the restaurant. We was in a real high class, Beverly Hills, upscale, posh, whatever you want to call it. And he came in and was talking to the, the whitest, blondest, blue eyedest, most purest American apple pie eating white woman, like this. Come here, bitch. I'm Rick Giants. Licked the whole side of her face, man. What'd she do? She was with it. He boned her after that, man. He boned her after that. It was no, <laughs> it was none of the things you would think would happen if a black man does these, walks up to a white woman and licks the whole side of her face and calls her a bitch. All right. What other wild stuff you seen him do with women? Oh man, I seen him tell women pull out their titties. You know what I'm saying? I seen him tell women, all the women to give another, serve another man, give him a blow. I see, I see him do it all, man. Anything that, uh, that's part of something you would think a pimp would do. And this wasn't a pimp, this is a rock star. It wasn't no pimp, it was just a straight up player, man. He, he wasn't trying to, it was like, that's how he was rolling, man. And the women was all with it, man. I got a friend, a good friend that broke up with his girl because he took her to one of the concerts and Rick, called on stage and threw his tongue down her throat. She was with it. They were supposed to get married, man. You know what I'm saying? He's seen his fiance sucking Rick's tongue on stage, Madison Square Garden, man. <laughs> this shit really took place, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, get back to back then, you know, we started really getting tight because my man was buck wild. He was, you know, and I had, you know, I had started doing things that I wasn't doing before I got out the Navy. Like I was experimenting with the coke and, and, and drinking a little bit more, and smoking weed, the whole Hollywood scene. I was, I was drawn into all of that, you know? And uh, my brother didn't do any of this shit. So it was, whatever was available for Eddie Murphy on the dark side, I got all of it. Because he didn't want any of it. I got all, it was, it was millions of chicks lined up that had a chipped toenail or, you know, something was wrong with them. That's all it took with him, chipped toenail. I don't care how fine she was, man. Toenail's chipped. You don't want her? Fine. That, I was having them. You know what I'm saying? It was all kind of cats wanting to hang out with kilos of blow. He didn't want to do blow. Oh, you want to hang out with them? Fine. It was Jamaicans with bales of weed like this. Come on, I give you all you want for free. No, just hang out with me, Eddie. He wasn't with it. You don't want the weed? Fine. I was there for all that shit, man. And Rick James was the, the embodiment of all of that by himself. He had the weed. He had the chicks. He had the drink. He had the location. He's the first person who I went to his house. He had a pool in his living room. 
All right? It wasn't no separate. It was in his living room. It was a gigantic pool with plants all around it. I bugged out, man, from that whole shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm hanging out. We go up to his house for the weekend and got snowed in. And he had, his house was like, it was one big mansion. Then it had uh, connecting joints to it. You know what I'm saying? And, and he had, and each one in the house was, was filled up with women. You know, the Mary Jane girls and this one, Val Young and the other one. You know what I'm saying? Then the, the groupies in the next one. And, and some more groupies in this one over here. And processing the do rags is over there. I mean, it was off the hook. It was around the clock food. You understand? He had Linda Hunt coming out with whatever you want at 24 hours a day. I had never been exposed to nothing like that. And, uh, that was kind of like my first uh, inside look at my man's whole behavior. And he had this thing with me where he used to always like fuck with me, man. I don't, I don't know what, what started it, but he would fuck with me. Like we went up to the house and uh, we snowed in and he took it upon himself. I'll never forget is to get on a loudspeaker throughout the whole complex compound and say, if anybody gives Charlie Murphy some pussy, they fired. I, I don't know what made him do that, you know? I don't even know if there was a discussion with all the chicks, like, you know, I'm getting them first or whatever. But he, I remember he did that. He had the security monitor me the whole time I was there. I thought that was weird because everybody else was doing their thing. But he did, for some reason, he didn't want me to have any fun. After that, we kept hanging out. You know, whenever he was in town, we would hang out or whatever. We'd run into each other in L.A. And then, you know, uh, he and I because of the, you know, the drug thing. We had a, like a, it was a separate la relationship outside the one that we all had when Eddie was there, because Eddie didn't get high. He used to wake up in the morning and say, why y'all motherfuckers can't, why is everybody so tired? We, because we didn't go to sleep yet. And it'd be time to go to work. We would be up all night. We went to Studio 54. And back then, Studio 54, even to this day, I'll say, Studio 54 was the ultimate uh, club, the ultimate. There has never been and never will be nothing that goes beyond that spot. That spot had, you walk in, they had people buck naked with body paint on for their outfit. You know what I'm saying? Now, you be talking to a chick for an hour, and then you realize she's buck naked. You know what I'm saying? You think that she got a dress on that was tight, and you start seeing the hair on the crotch. And like, this motherfucker's buck naked. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, <laughs> everything was going on up in there. Up in the balcony, niggas was doing their thing in the balcony. Whatever they want, have sex, get high, you then know, come back downstairs, start dancing, and go to the bar, start drinking, and they had food in there. It was like you come in and do whatever you want and stay till the, the sun came up spot. So all of the the who's who in show business and then in the business world, they was in there. They was buck wild in it. So he handed me the blunt, we lit it up, started smoking it. I guess that's the peace offering or whatever. You know, we smoking the blunt. And then uh, my man just said, yo, do Charlie Murphy. It's like 10, at least 10 women. It was, it was, it was it was a lot of women on the bed, man. I mean, blonde hair, brunette, afro, cornbread, it was all there. That's a smorgasbord. That's whatever you want, man. That's whatever you like. It was even an oriental over there. Now, how many black men you know can say they bone the oriental? Holla! You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm saying that's, that's rare, man. That's rare in America. That's rare in America. I can, you know, I can proudly say I'm a member of that class, man, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, I went there, and it was, you know, all because of Rick Jane. That's what turned me on to that, you know what I'm saying? I ain't ashamed to admit it, you know what I'm saying? It was a good time, a good thing. Like I told you, I whip Rick's ass a minimum of 10 times. That's a minimum, that's a bad minimum. It's been more than that. But I only, I'm only going to tell you a couple of the stories because, you know, Rick is so wild and has went so far off the, the meter. It's shit that I can't even tell, talk, tell you on TV. I mean, you know, I, for the sake of our friendship, you know what I'm saying, I, I'm not even going to bring it up. But trust me, he's went there. He, he, he has went where it's like, yo, Rick, man, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? You done took this shit too far. And his response is like this. 
There's no such place. Darkness. Let's go to the abyss, nigga. <laughs> I'm not with it, man. I don't want to go to the abyss, man. You know what I'm saying? Rick wants to go to the abyss. In fact, he dwells in the abyss. Rick James dwells in the abyss, okay? And he, and he wants company sometimes, you know? And, and for some reason, he likes to reach out for me. Whenever I'm around, when he, when he wants to go there, he will reach out for me to try to take me to the abyss with him. And I'm not with it, man. I'm not with it. And that's when we end up, you know, tussling or whatever, you know what I'm saying? What I really think is that, you know, Rick would be so fucking high when he was doing a lot of these things that when he received these beatdowns, he probably don't even remember getting them. I, that, that's the only thing I could come up with. For you to keep doing the same thing, get an ass whipping, come back, do this, go there again, get another ass whipping. But the one thing that you had in common in all of those ass whippings was you was fucked up. That t kind of tells me you don't remember getting an ass whipping. He probably would wake up the next morning and be like, damn, I must have ran a marathon yesterday. I was in a marathon, where's my sneakers at? You know what I'm saying? I, that's the only thing I can think of, man. Damn, my jaw's hurting. I must have went to the dentist yesterday. You know what I'm saying? He would wake up and totally forget that he got his ass whipped. I mean, you know, most men, we have egos and, and the ass whipping is kind of hard to accept. So he probably was in denial and, you know, black, blacked it out and came up with his own excuse for his soreness the following day. The reason he was going to a chiropractor or whatever, you know, he might have, I must have fell off a horse. So my, my back is hurting, but that's from when the foot was up your ass, nigga. You didn't fall off no horse. You know what I'm saying? But he would come up with his own shit. <laughs> he was riding horses with Eddie and Trevor. Yeah. So I'm hearing doctors was riding horses yesterday. I was <laughs> slipping deaf. He had forgot when right. darkness was like this. Fire! You know what I'm saying? Let me not forget that, you know, Rick James was very mad. He remembered that ass whipping because he wanted revenge. He called back. And they all motherfuckers. And, and uh, you know how he tried to set it up the first time? Because he really wanted to get me, you know what I'm saying? He felt that, you know, I was the main one that was pummeling his legs. You know what I'm saying? So you know, <laughs> this is what he did, man. He challenged us. He said, he's, now they had a challenge. he said he was coming over to play some ball, right? So that particular day, I wasn't there. But I, this is how I know it was all about him getting me. He brings over the guy with the crooked eye and all of them to play ball. And they all got sneakers on, but Rick got on cowboy boots, right? As soon as the game started, he just kicked my man Fruity in the balls. That was the end of the game. <laughs> that was the end of the game, man. So who do you think he was going to kick in the balls that day? <laughs> check, ball check. Pia! Kick Fruity in the balls and get back in the limo and drive back to Buffalo? You came all the way from Buffalo to New Jersey. I whipped your ass about eight days ago. That was for me, but I wasn't there that day, so Fruity, he had to take one to the nuts, man. <laughs> And you know what? I know he probably went home and felt that he, you know, he was victorious that day. But the, the reality of the whole thing is Fruity has two children today, so you weren't that victorious, okay? Still friends, man. How are you still friends with him? We still see each other on a regular. Whenever I go to California, you know, Rick James is like a family friend. He knows my moms. He knows my brother. He knows my, he knew my pops before he passed. He knows or uh, my kids, I know a couple of his kids, I know his sister, I know his brother, I, I met his mother before she passed, I know, you know, we, we know each other, man. This is just some kooky shit that went on in the 80s that looking back on it, it was insanity when it was happening, man, but it was just normal, it was, it was, it was the 80s, it was the time, you know, it just happened and, it, and you know, and now I can look back on it and it's funny as hell, so why not talk about it? You know what I'm saying? Why not have let somebody else laugh? Because I laugh when I think about this shit. Because the shit was funny and it was, you know, it was insanity. And you know, hey, it happened.
And, and for some reason, he likes to reach out for me. Whenever I'm around, when he, when he wants to go there, he will reach out for me to try to take me to the abyss with him. And I'm not with it, man. I'm not with it. And that's when we end up, you know, tussling or whatever. You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, over the years, you know, um, my brother has, ha has had, like, some real... Some real interesting characters that work for him and shit, you know. Um, I mean, we had Big Larry, we had Fruity, we had Bop. One of the most outstanding uh, characters, I ain't gonna say his real name, I'll just say his name was, uh, uh, I don't know, let's say his name was Jupiter. I don't know. Let's say his name was Daryl, right? You know, uh, <clears throat> he, he was a short cat, you know, and he knew my brother from way, way back. They grew up together and uh, they were real tight. And uh, he used to work for my brother when they, when they was up at Saturday, Saturday Night Live. And he, Dick Ebersaw used to, was, he really liked this guy because he was real smart. And he had, uh, he, he had a, a, a scholarship to Colgate University as well as Stanford. And he could have went to either school, but he decided he didn't want to go. And he, because he was kind of like the black John Belushi, but he wasn't famous. I mean, he was off the hook, you know what I'm saying, with the drinking and the getting high and everything. And uh, what ended up happening with this guy is uh, <clears throat> he, he became, you know, drinking can make you obnoxious, you know what I'm saying? So one night we was uh, in L.A., we went to this club, not, not a club, but a restaurant called La Familia. <clears throat> Dean Martin used to eat in there. I actually seen the real Dean Martin. He's sitting at his table, he's eating his spaghetti or whatever, you know. And we're over here and chilling, we're eating out, whatever, waiting for our stuff. And then, um, <clears throat> then Daryl walks in. <laughs> <laughs> then Daryl walks in and um, he's real drunk. And he, when he came in, you know, he looked at the whole table and, and he's, he was, you know how they get like this, like a scarf face. So start good night to the bad guy. He was just like that, man. He came in, and we was all at the table, and he went down the line, and there was a Artel Neville. Remember Artel Neville from E? She was there, and she was talking to my brother. And he goes down the line insulting everybody at the table. You know, he tells, like, it was me, my cousin Ray, Big Fruity, Larry, this guy named Dougie, my brother, and Artel Neville. And he goes to each guy and says what, how he would whip that person's ass and knock them out and I'll slap you, Charlie, I'll knock you out, and, and Ray, I'll whip the shit out of you, and Larry, I'll, I'll hit you with a gut punch. And blah, blah, blah. Charlie, I'll knock you the fuck out, bitch. And you, Ray. Maybe big. I'll beat the shit out of you. Faggot. Fuck all of you. Big Larry. You with a fucking gut punch. In your fucking big stomach. Greedy motherfucker. I mean he was he was he he was being real offensive, man. You know, and when somebody tell me they're gonna knock me out, man, you know, I'm, it's real hard not to respond at this, you know, on the spot. I'm gonna tell you, I'm glad my brother Vernon wasn't there, cause he, I'm telling you, he would, he would tore his clothes off right there, he stripped him, dragged him out. You know what I'm saying? But we all had restraint. He went down the line. He said something to Artel that was, uh, I'm not even gonna repeat what he said to her. You know. It was off the hook. He, 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 he went over the line with her. He said something to my brother. In fact, I know what he said. He called it because, you know, even though he's, I mean, uh, Daryl. Because <laughs> Daryl, even though he's black, he insults like a white man. And one of his favorite insults, I mean, he could say this like nobody else. He's, yeah, you fucking moron. Fuck you. Right? Called my brother a moron, yo. I've never been called a moron by anyone in my life but him. You know what I'm saying? The way he would say it, 
it would really make you angry, you know, especially you know, it, it just it, 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 he had a way of doing it, man. That's all I can say. And he would call anybody there. He called my brother there. He called me there. He called his brother. That was his 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 uh, bread and butter. His one two punch, moron. All right. I remember one night we was in, in his club, right, L.A. We come out the club, and this guy had set up a barbecue pit right in front of the door. We walk out the out, out the out the club. You, the, the barbecue smell hits you. You just come out the club dancing and all that. You you you, you with it? Cause you ain't thinking about barbecue at three in the morning, but that shit was smelling good, right? We get in line. As we get to the front of the line, I look on the grill. There's two guys in front of us, and there's three sausages on the grill. The guy behind us was a gangbanger. He had colors on and the whole shit. He was with like four other cats. He looks on the grill, and he counts how many sausages are on there. So he knew that once we get up there, it's going to be no more. So he starts going through all the whole gangbangers. You cool? Fuck that shit, cook. Look at here, nook. Let's get my squab on, cuz. I'm hungry, nook. Let's go get that sausage, cuz. And I was like, yo, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not trying to get shot with no AK-47 over Frank. You know what I mean? <laughs> turns around and goes, fuck you, you fucking moron. And I seen the, the wheels turning in his cat's head. He said, moron? What's moron, cuz? Luckily, none of them knew what a moron was, man. Or we would, I wouldn't be telling you the story. On that, I was like, look, we got credit cards, we got money, and that, I'm not getting, let's go. I had to drag him off the line. He was going to challenge some, yo, he was going to challenge some gangbangers, man, over Frank, man. It ain't worth it. He was off the hook with his shit, man, with his insults, you know? And the way he would say moron, yeah, yeah, fucking moron. Fuck you, pal. It was like pouring acid on you, man. He had he had he had a talent with that, man. So we all get up, we go to the car, and he comes out. He want and we're like, yo, hey, we're we're going we're going to the, the Beverly Center to get him to think that you know that's where we're going. So we get in the car, we go straight back to the house. <laughs> Get to the house, and on the, all the way there, everybody's like talking about what just finished happening. Like, yo, man, this guy really, he's lucky that he knew us as long as he knew us because, man, you know, anybody else would have did what he just did, man. You know, they would have got, I'm telling you, they would have got done. We go in the house, and uh, everybody's going in different directions. So I'm, I'm in the kitchen, and there was this guy named Roughhouse. So he, all these characters have been ahead of these funny names and shit that worked for my brother. There was this guy named Roughhouse. He looked like a bulldog. He was a big, fat motherfucker. Now he works for <laughs> He's still doing security. He needs to stop. He's almost 60. He can't fight. All right? And I want everybody out there to know that <laughs> has fake security. All right? Okay? His security is he's the guy. Is, he, he's one, he has one foot in the wheelchair. Trust me. Anyway, uh... <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Rough House is sitting there, you know, and Rough House used to like to fuck with me too. You said we used to have this, this like uh, playing the dozens or whatever you want to call it. He tried to say something funny about me, and I tried to say something funny about him. And uh, we walk in the room, and Rough House is now teasing me because Daryl. Uh, told me he was gonna knock me out. Yeah, Charlie. He that little motherfucker tell you he's gonna knock you the fuck out, Charlie. He, he. Right? And I'm like, yo, whatever, man. That's, but I tell you what, if 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 I ain't know him, I'm telling you, man. On the, on the serious side, I was getting ready. That really was hard for me not to get up and, and drill him right there, man. But as I'm saying this, you know, I feel two hands grip on the side of my face like this, and then I hear you fucking moron. And it was him, man. He had he had my head like this, and he tried to slam it onto the. the it was like a a, a a nook that I was standing next to. It was marble. He tried to slam my head on there. So when I heard his voice, my head was going. I, I, you know, I was able to power out of it because he didn't have good leverage. He was pulling from. You know, he was short. But I got real mad, man. That, you know, it, you already called me, disrespecting me in public. Now you. I don't know how you got in the house. You're in the house and you're grabbing my head and you're trying to slam it on. So I, I started beating on him at that point. 
So he was like in front of me. I was going to the body. Boom, 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 warming up his ribs. And he, he didn't want to hit. He didn't want no more. So he grabbed my hands and was trying to hold my hands. And I was struggling to try to, you know, to get loose. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know about circular motion back then. You know, I was trying to get loose. And uh, my hand, he started losing his grip and he grabbed my sweater. And he held on to my sweater while I was trying to punch. And he stretched the sleeve. It, when he let go, the sleeve was touching the ground. I was standing up in the sleeve of my sweater. This is a $500 sweater, man. You know, this is back in like in 90 something. But you know, $500 sweater to me, hey, man, you just fucked up some nice shit. That I, you know, I, mean, I don't got a lot of $500 sweaters. Shit was down to the ground. And I look at the, the sweater on the ground, and I hear Rough House go, he shit, you look at your arms, you like a clown. And it just infuriated me, man. So I. I pulled up my shit, bunched it up, my head, as soon as my fist popped out, and as I popped my fist out, I mean, uh, Daryl. <laughs> Daryl added more fuel by looking me dead in the eye and saying, fuck you, pal. Man, boy, whew, I had dynamite. I put it on his chin. What? And he slid across the floor like this. And skidded to a hall. He was knocked out cold, man. His jaw was cracked. He's knocked out cold. So all my rage was in that punch. You know, he was laying on the ground. He was sprawled out. And then Randy gets up and starts, you know, trying to wake him up. And and I'm I'm like, you know, I don't want to really. You know, I'm thinking about stomping him, but I'm like, you know what? I know I know his mother, man. You know what I'm saying? So I, I didn't stomp, because he was, he, was, he was there to be stomped, I mean, with no resistance. But I said, you know, I know his mother. I, I, so I went upstairs, and I was in the room, and I was like, wow, I can't believe how, what just happened, you know? Because that was like beating up, almost like beating up your cousin or somebody that you knew for a long time, you know what I'm saying? So that was kind of fucking with me, right? And then, you know, uh, I was in a room that had a patio, and had a big door, and the door was open. And, and I'm standing there, I'm like, damn, I can't believe what I just did, man. Wow, man, I lost it. And I hear something outside the window go, It's not fucking alright. I want more. Come out, you fucking pussy. I want more. And I realized that this, this nigga's outside, man. He's, he wants more. Right? And then my brother came in the room, and I looked at my brother, and we stood there for about maybe three minutes, but he kept hearing like a, like a cat whining outside the window. You punch like a bitch. I want more. I want more. I want more. Finally, yo, I was like, you know, all that shit about knowing your moms and all that, that shit was out the window, man. My brother looked at me. He's like, yo, go finish him off. I was like, no problem. I went downstairs, boy. I went to work on this midget. The nigga's not there. He got he had a Napoleon complex, man. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this. I don't got no problem with beating up any motherfucker. I don't care how, because you might be saying, oh, he beat up a little nigga. I beat up big niggas too. All right? You know what I'm saying? So don't get it twisted. This, you know, big niggas don't usually just want to just do the stupid shit, though. You know what I'm saying? It's always a clown. This nigga, this nigga's about this this high. He had a Napoleon complex, and and me and him used to roll. We would go to a bar, and he would find the biggest nigga in the club and and, and steal on him, and then me and him got to do the nigga up. You know what I'm saying? That's why I stopped going out with him, cause he 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 had a Napoleon complex. But anyway, so I go downstairs. I put a wreck on him. I mean, it was. It was it was bad, man. So he's after I put this wreck on him, he's he's out, he's laid out. I'm like, I, I'm going back upstairs. You know what I'm saying? They they wake him up and they take and the cats just taking him to take him off the property. I think at the time I was about a buck seventy, whatever. These cats was like two fifty, two seventy. They was big. And my man, you know, he was they took him to the car and it was like, get in the car, man. And he just looked at all three of them and he said, Fuck you, pal! Wop! 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 And did a combo, triple, fired on three giants. Yo, you ever used to read Beetle Bailey? Like when the Sarge used to fuck him up and he would be like, look like dirty laundry, like just balled up, like a bag of laundry. That's when, he, when they finished beating him, he'd be like a bag of dirty laundry, man. Like just, you just think he's ready to go be washed. 
And they picked him up, they threw him in the car, he was all busted up, and they drove down the hill. Now this motherfucker had took, because when I had him, I, I'm telling you, I, <laughs> I took the boy to the brick oven, I made pizza with his face. His face was, I demolished it. And then when they got on him, they put the crust on him. They fucked him up, man. He was fucked up bad. They take him now to the gate. Threw him in the bushes, right? He told him to get the fuck out of here. You think, okay, it's all over with. They get back up to the house. <laughs> we sit in the kitchen and then we start hearing, boom, 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 boom. And they had a, a monitor, right? So we look at the monitor, his face was it like, it like somebody had a Halloween mask on, pushing it on the, on the camera. And it was him, and he was going, Come out, come out, that much more. Boom, 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 boom. You're a bunch of pussies in there, you can't punch. What's the matter? You're afraid to come out? Come out and play! Boom, boom. Yo, man, this went on for like 45 minutes, man. And then, to take you to the Twilight Zone, a limo pulls up. Now, the night before that, uh, uh, I ran Barkley. I ran the Blade Barkley, who used to be the middleweight champion. He lost his title to James Lights Out Tony. And he took a hell of a, he took a tremendous beating. Tremendous. You know what I'm saying? And uh, his face was, whew, I mean, his face was bad, man. You know, he looked like he required surgery. You know, and uh, the weird shit about it was, you would think that somebody whose face was like that and got it whipped like that, would go to the hospital and stay for at least a month or whatever. But he can't, he went to a comedian's house. Maybe he was he had lost some lost his mind or whatever. He was crazy, cause you supposed to go to the hospital. You go to Eddie Murphy's house. He came straight from his ass whipping, flew from Vegas to Eddie's house. We didn't even know him that good. We didn't know it wasn't like he was in our family, dog. You know what I'm saying? We knew him like see the club, yo, with a blade. What's up, man? And then you get whipped out and you come, you come straight to us. So we was, we didn't know what to say to the brother, you know what I'm saying? But he came over, his face was fucked up. All we could say is, damn, you know, you want a drink? You know, because I know in the cowboy movies, you know what I'm saying? They, they give you something to drink, and pull a tooth or whatever. His face, maybe it'd ease the pain, give him some whiskey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so we offered him a drink. But I'll never forget what he said. Man, my man came, he was like, Yo, as bad as my face is, man, whoever that cat at the gate is, his face made my face feel better. I feel better, man. He wanted to go to the club after that. He didn't think his face was that bad. He drove in, he seen Daryl. He was like, damn, what the fuck happened to him? Daryl was like this. Fucking bitches. Then you can fight, you fucking moron! Boom, 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 boom. Till 5 0 came and got him, man. We had 5 0 had to handle that. They had to, you know, because it was either call, call the cops or kill him. You know, we didn't want to go there. We know it's mama, you know what I'm saying? So they 5 0 handled him. They took him out of there, man. All right, let's go. All right, let's go.